Well, welcome back to another episode on uh, painting and acrylics. So today we're going to do a little beach scene. I had a request uh, about how do I go about doing sand, mixing up the colors, the base colors, and the final top coat to do sand, or to make it at least look realistic for that matter. Well, I will show you a, a reference photo from which I'm going from. This is a picture that I took uh, while I was on Estero Beach up in uh, uh, Fort Myers over there and uh, on the Cape Coral on the west coast of Florida. So here we are. I got just my basic drawing. I did it with vine charcoal. And this is an 8x10 um, birch wood cradled, meaning it's got the backing. This is cradled. So what I will do... And I've had that question too, how do I coat uh, the panel? First thing I do, I buy, uh, you can buy this at the big box store. It's called Kills uh, 2. It's a water-based sealer and primer that I buy at the big box stores. And also Zenser uh, 123 is another one, but just make sure it says water-based, especially if you're gonna paint an acrylic. So first, I use a number six brush this is approximately this is a number six brush right here okay so i would paint the edges first two coats then because i paint landscape like this then i would put the first coat on this way then the second coat once it dries will be this way and then i let it dry and i got a nice smooth it has a little bit of texture to it you can see some brush uh brush marks to it but that's fine it's it's wanted so now that i've got that uh question so if you have any further questions about uh prepping your board let me know in the comment section and i will tell you a little bit more so remember zenser one two three or kills two both are you can find them at the big box store and you could uh prep your boards like that and this is birch wood. So we're gonna start uh, this time with my darks, and then I'm gonna go for the clouds. I mean, not the clouds, well, at least the sky and then the water. And then lastly, I'll probably do just uh, the sand. So on my palette here, let me show you. I have uh, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, raw umber, and white. Well, the difference between the raw and the burnt umber, this is a little bit more transparent, the raw umber. So basically, if I want to change the tinting strength of a color, especially uh, my ultramarine is usually what I use it for. It helps bring down the, the tone of the blue, make it more of a gray, uh, grayish color, which is something you want. So let's start. So for here, I'm going to start with uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of lizard and crimson. Let's go for burnt umber. Just make a dark color. I'm not trying to follow my lines, just arbitrarily. Just quickly, just plop on the the paint and if you go over some parts no worries we could fix that and i will show you at some point the reference photo is going to pop up here put a little bit more umber maybe a cad yellow now i vary the the color sometimes I add a little bit more yellow sometimes I add a little bit more blue I'll make it brown greenish all right so now we have the approximate um, colors we need and as you can see it's not as dark as you would think it is which is a good thing. I don't want the painting to be too dark, uh, at least uh, the base to be too dark. I like sometimes when it's a little bit transparent. And for the fact is after that, I could add darker parts without a problem and then put highlights and mid-tones. So 
I go for a middle, middle value dark, if that makes any sense to you. Not too dark, not too light. And I like it when it's a little bit transparent because sometimes I use some of the transparency to my advantage to show like, you know, uh, other effects like, like, uh, you know, the foliage, uh, all the plants and all that. And then, you know, I make it really thin or some glazes over some of these uh, really uh, transparent spots. And it really brings out the paintings. What makes it look like it's realistic, but really, you know, it's more of an impressionistic. All right, so for the skies, I'm gonna go for a grayish, bluish sky. So for that, I'll go ultramarine blue. Little bit, let me see, maybe I'll go for the raw sienna. Change it a little bit. Little bit of white. So you don't really need to buy a gray. You can make gray using blue and either the raw umber or the burnt umber. You can make a nice, beautiful chromatic gray. Uh, so you don't always need all the colors that you, you know, some people are asking me like, what color should I buy? Well, you don't really need that many colors in order to achieve a painting. You want to achieve color harmony. We're going to make a dark gray sky. Again, blue, a little bit of raw sienna, some white. Now, because acrylics doesn't cover as well as oils, you will perhaps need two coats of the paint. Okay. So either one very heavy coat. And so this is what I'm talking about. You could, if I could just cut in, shape my landscape the way I want it. Now this may be a little bit too dark for the stormy skies, but Sorry, I could change that afterwards. This is just the first coat, so. Even if I run over some of these parts, like, like I said, we're not looking for details right off the bat, all right? Just put the general shapes where they need to be. If they, you know, if you paint over it just a little bit, no big deal. You could work over it without a problem. So now let's work on the water, which was let me see a little bit of, um, let me see, we're going to go blue, yellow ochre. And the reason I chose yellow ochre is because it has some red in it. And I might even add a little bit more red and a little bit more blue. about right I really start out dark and then I will work my way to the mid tones and lights and you will see what I'm saying about that a little bit more yellow as I'm getting over here lighter because we're getting to the seashore Again, no particular detail. We'll save those bad boys for last. And the great thing about acrylics, it just dries fast. All right, so now I'm gonna use a little bit of this sky color. Maybe go a little bit more brown. white let me look at this maybe a little bit of yellow ochre a lot of white see the difference maybe more white not too white because eventually there's going to be highlights 
There you go. So it was ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a lot of white, and a hint of ochre to warm up the color. So I'm just gonna start, you know, just plopping in without any uh, worries about how exactly the land detailed itself because that's going to be last thing on my mind. So I'm just arbitrarily just putting it. So that's the base color. That's just to show you the base color. I'm not worried about even strokes because you know why that's what makes the the beauty of the painting is the uneven strokes and then it just gives that feel more whoops too much it gives it more um charisma to the painting make it a little bit lighter And I'm not, the only medium I'm using to make this paint flow is water, just in case you wanted to know. I don't use any kind of retarder. I don't use any kind of uh, glazing products, just water. Eventually, as you get better with acrylics, you'll learn to control how much water you need to make the paint move. It's just something that you learn eventually. So now this sky has had time to dry. All right, now, so let's go back over the skies. Again, same combo. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber, actually raw umber. Doesn't matter really. Uh, let me go. A little bit of burnt umber this time. Maybe a little more blue. Now, the, I use the base color to my advantage. Uh, it just helps with the top coat of blending the colors together. Because I can see, still see some of the base color showing through. Maybe not to the camera, you can't see. But it does show through a little bit. And it just helps with, you know, these little subtle details that, you know, you wouldn't otherwise... Think about unless you're painting and you're like oh wow this is nice and I could reshape the landscape to where I want it to be here I'm not putting on the coat too thick For this side, I use a little bit more uh, raw sienna. There you go. Make it look like a rainy, well, it was gonna be raining that day, so we did have some showers. Maybe add a little bit of yellow ochre to that. A little bit more white. There was some indication of 
light. Maybe it'll add a little more blue. Blend these together a little bit. And mind you, I'm still using a big brush for this. Blend this a little bit more between the two colors. Just to create like a little bit of a transition. Fix this a little bit here. I just wetted my brush and just to smooth this out a little bit. Just to smooth it out. And I'll come back and work on it a little bit more in a minute. See, maybe we can make a little bit of cloud formation here and there by using a little bit more blue and white. Let me just look at my reference. I'm applying a little bit thicker paint. Okay, I'm just blending it a little bit down here. Don't worry about using your fingers. You can use your fingers, it's allowed. Just tamper it down. Maybe more white. There you go, just like that. Go back over it. You could go back over as much as you want. Let me define this cloud a little bit more here. Although it's not like that in a painting, I'm just ad-libbing as I'm going along meaning I'm making up some of the parts here because I can. Use a little bit more blue. More water on my brush and what's the water's going to what the water's doing is Smoothing out the edges a little bit. Whoop. To the rescue. Woo! There you go. And if I don't like the way the sky looks, well, that's fine. You could always change it. Smooth out the edges here a little bit. What's nice about acrylic is that nothing is is a set thing meaning anything could be changed at any moment a few light clouds just dangling there i'm just using the edge of my brush
There you go. Now let me fix the bottom of this painting here a little bit. Okay, maybe go a little bit of ochre. And blue, let me see. Less so some signs of light. The paint is still wet, so it's mixing a little bit. It's okay. Just put a thicker coat on there eventually. And then I could always go back to it. The silver like silver lining. Some around here, just a little bit of light breaking through these clouds. Remember, this is just yellow ochre, white, and I let a little bit of ultramarine blue mix in. I think at that particular moment, the light had, the, the, the rain showers had just passed. All right, now let's go for the trees. For the trees, I'm gonna go, and I may work on a sky eventually just a little bit more, but right now I'm just letting it dry and I'll think about it while I'm working on the trees. So let's go again with ultramarine blue. This time let's go with a little bit of Indian yellow. Okay, that works like a nice green. And I'm what I'm doing here is a glaze of the color. Just, you know, glazing over what I just did and letting the background show a little bit. That's the whole point of having these, that's why I paint a lot in transparent colors. So, it's okay if you see some of this here go through, it's not a problem. You could add a little bit of brown if you want. Now, I don't know if the camera is able to pick up, but you're able to see some of the colors show through, my base colors, at least. There you go. Maybe a little bit more blue towards the end and burnt umber. And notice I'm using a big brush you know, to cover space quickly. There you go. I'm gonna let this settle up a little bit, okay? 
And then I'm gonna go back with the more highlights. Now I'm just gonna work on the sand. Now for the sand, I'm gonna do, use a yellow ochre and a lot of white. Just a little bit of yellow ochre just to warm up the sand a little bit. And this is where you make the highlights. I'm gonna go, you know, very light colors. And this is where I'm gonna shape the landscape. This is the part where I shape the landscape to where I want it to be. Notice how the highlights are really working against this dark base coat that I had initially. Then, you know, just go between trees and just to show like the sand is going right behind these trees here. Leave some spots that are open and then here I'm gonna show like the sand is coming upwards. I'm gonna show some slant. Um, it's important to show direction of your stroke as well because then also it shows the viewer which way um, like the sand is going meaning is there a hill or no hill if I did this all just flat like this then it just tells me the landscape was just flat that's all it does but not really there was a little bit of a slant so and this is not even my uh, brightest brights yet this is not my highest highlights this is just like I would say even uh, mid-tone So just work in that part first. I'm going to go in a little bit more. And by me going up here and cutting into the shape this way, it gave the viewer the notion that there is a slant. If I hadn't done that and just went straight, it would just say that this, you know, the landscape was just flat. So I cut into this just to give you an indication that, hey, you know, there is, and let me just put a little bit of cut ins here, just to give you an indication that there is, uh, you know, uh, a slant to this hill here. Okay, let's go with a number four. Using the same color combo. A little bit of yellow ochre and white. So, reinforce this a little bit. And here, is where some of the magic happens because <clears throat> I'm gonna use like a bright a bright a dry brush technique to feather in the sand into this dark area so basically I'm going light and then I'm just feathering in making it thinner as I'm going down this way all right And like I said, this is still the mid-tones. You'll see the highlights afterwards. So just like, there you go. Just pushing that sand. Now, as you can see inside on the reference photo, I'm going to show you that there's a little bit darker area this way, right in here in this part. So I'm going to stop like here first and then I'm going to go a little bit more gray on this side and work my way to the water so it's going to be like ingredients and I'm going to keep it still a little bit dark and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to add sand pebbles and they need to show up as well so 
let me just finish this part so you can see the next step. Added just a little bit of blue. And you see, I'm just leaving these, these markings on the sand, my brush strokes, let some of the bottom show through. But that's what I want. So let me add to that mix, a little bit of raw umber, a little bit of blue, make a little bit of a gray color, bluish gray, to represent the shore. Let me see, maybe more blue. Uh, maybe more lighter color. That probably could work. Probably a little bit umber. just to give a little bit of gradients. You see how all these colors are mixing into each other, just kind of softly. And then we have a little bit of the beach water mixing into this color as well. And any kind of highlights I put on top of these colors eventually will really stand out. All right, already you can see that all this darkening here is making this highlight stand out even more. All right, so back to this mixture of ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. Maybe a little bit of raw umber. reshaping the landscape here and it gets to be and this is because of the reflection of the sky it's going to be darker here and then as you look straight up you'll you know the sky got lighter this way all right the sky was darker that way so let me show you the transition so now i'm just making A little bit uh, then more ochre and brown for the water. And let me see, a little bit more white. And I'm letting, again, some of the base color show through let's add maybe a little bit of Indian yellow because we're getting to more shallow water so it's gonna be lighter and we're gonna go with Indian yellow which is a little bit more uh, cooler in color. Let me see this. Uh, this should work. Now I'm going to give this direction again. And if it's not good, I could always change it. It's acrylics. Acrylics is like the honey badger of mediums. It just does not care. You could do whatever. Maybe just a little bit of blue. A little bit more white, just to make it lighter as we get towards the shoreline. 
let the colors mix. Add a little bit of water to my paint because I feel like it's getting sticky. I notice I'm not really making a, a well-defined line and you'll see why. And this, the water's not even finished yet, so. Uh, white, a little bit of yellow ochre. Very, very little yellow ochre. Remember, yellow ochre is very powerful. So. There you go. Just give this notion of light behind these rain clouds. Just reinforce them a little bit more. If you want to make some rays coming down. Reinforce the light. Let's do that here too. Let's show some light poking through these clouds. Let me add some water to this and smooth down like show some of these rays before the paint dries just add some water to your brush a little bit more paint dilute the paint really well and then just push with your hands there you go now I'm just giving an indication of light popping through here let's put some here too why not let's do that here let's reinforce that light Light shining from the heavens. More light. There we go. There we go. That's the beauty of acrylics. You can do whatever you want. trees I know I said that before a little bit of Indian yellow ultramarine a little bit of white this time maybe a little bit of ochre just to tone down that yellow a little bit because then if I decide to put any highlights it'll really make it nice so here we go. I'm just using the corner. I hope you can see this, the corner edge of my brush here and just making like a C motion going downwards. That's all I'm doing. If you don't have enough paint on one side, go to the other side. Let some of the base color show through your paint, okay?
you don't have to cover everything. Maybe add a little bit more blue, a little bit more white as I go further down. Gray down these colors a little bit. I'm doing very lightly, okay? Don't don't put too much pressure on the brush. Lightly. There you go. Actually, a little bit more blue. A little bit more white. A little bit of ochre. Get some highlights on this side here. Again, ultramarine blue and yellow, engine yellow. A little bit more white this time. Less blue. Let me see if this is too much or not. That works, this is good. Little highlights here, there, wherever you want your viewers to focus. Top edges of these trees. Use your fingers if you want to feather some of this down. Okay. If I want to make these darker, uh, these darks darker, I can. Just ultramarine blue and burnt umber, but I'm not. I'm just going to let it be a little bit transparent. So, all right, now for the sand. Let's go back to the sand again. We're going to do lighter, brighter highlights. And this time for the highlights, I'm going to go a lot of white and use the engine yellow and a lot of white it should give me brighter colors and the color the bright colors not gonna well gonna be everywhere but notice already i hope the camera can pick this up See how much more highlights I can get out of this? Try more white. Do like little pocket holes of sand here, like as if you could see behind the tree. Now I'm just going a little bit everywhere, just leaving some of the some of the base color of the sand to show through. It'll be more beneficial if I use like a, a flat brush instead of making every detail of that sand. Hey, 
And then the sand's gonna get more details too in a minute. I'm gonna add, you know, like some seaweed that there was that was on the shore, on the shoreline. So I'm gonna give some indication of that. Let's give this some direction. Like you know, like you're going this way. That's why I let my brush show direction. I wasn't worried at the beginning which way the the brush strokes were going because I knew I was going to change it. There you go. And now you see how this is getting a little bit darker. So now uh, let's mix some of that with the sand color from the beach. So let's go a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of ultramarine blue. That's going to be like a transition color. And you will see in a reference photo. And if I don't like it, I could always change it. Let's just, let me see. I'm in a bad position here. And if this is not the color, if I feel like the color is not the way it's supposed to be, then it's easy. I could just glaze over it. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. Then I'm adding some yellow. And the reason why I did pure yellow is because with that mix or that mix that I just did a few seconds ago was toned down by adding um, yellow ochre and blue. Okay. And so I guess you could call it like a gray down color. And now I'm just using a little bit of pure uh, engine yellow on top of that gray down color. So the highlights are showing a little bit more here. So let's show some directional some directions of the wave. Let me see. Uh, well, the waves were going that way. So well, let's go. Let's make a representation of that. I just watered my brush here a little bit. Put some water on my brush to feather this out a little bit. Maybe more yellow, a little bit of white, and ultramarine. Oh, that was too much. Add a little bit of burnt umber. That's too. That was too uh, too green. Crimson, a little bit of ochre, some white. A 
blend some of these colors in. More blue. As I'm going here, this is some of the sky colors coming. I see some of the sky colors reflecting. Like I said, it's the beauty of acrylics. You could just blend, blend, blend. Or should I say, you could, you know, go over your colors more often. I'm still letting some of these colors show through. Trying to smooth this out a little bit. If you messed up, use water on your on your brush and then just erase it. There you go. Same here. I want to thin this out a little bit. You'll see color change, but that's okay. I'll dry back to its uh, normal uh, initial color. All right. Let me add a little bit more yellow. Go. You can use your finger, it's okay. Now we got waves. 
Just sweeping strokes. Sweeping strokes. There you go. So now, let me clean the beach up a little bit more here. Give it some nuance here and there, like a little sandbar going into the water. So for the seaweed, so for the seaweed, I want to add a little bit of ultramarine blue. with burnt umber and a little bit of alizarin crimson and I could always fix it if there's a problem so just like light dry dry brushing there's really not much water on my brush here just you know a little hints of seaweeds here, there, you know, show where the water line eventually goes up to. Yeah, there you go, just. I'm just using a little bit of water on my brush now, just fade this out. Just make them a little bit more transparent. There you go. Although there was not a cabbage palm, um, like I said, my painting, I can do whatever is necessary to give it that look, right? Same thing with your painting. If you want to, you could always add, subtract whatever you don't want. Because the palms here are not very important. They're not the feature of this painting. So I'm not going to give them too much detail, too much importance. They're just there. Just to, they're like the back of vocals. All right. All right. There you go. Let's give you some darks under here. Same here, you two. All right, you're just here for support. Let's make another range of palms. Some in the background here. <coughs> More blue. There's some here too. There. So right like that. Uh, there you go. You too. You get a set right here too. 
Yep, nothing too drastic. We got palm trees. Now folks, I added a little bit of cerulean blue. I wanted to vary those greens a little bit, but you saw how, how many different kind of greens I could do with just two or three colors by just using ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and Indian yellow. I was able to vary my greens there a bit and using some reds in there, which is the background to vary the color. Now I just actually want to add a little bit of a cooler green here. So I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, Indian yellow in the lizard, oh, not a lot of lizard, cerulean blue, then add some white, maybe more yellow. It's going to be like a cooler, cooler green here and there you know there we go use your finger not too much here just pop here there yeah there you go put those down and guess what we got ourselves a painting Boom, boom, boom. That's it. Actually, I want to reinforce this, make it this a little bit longer. So let's do a little bit of yellow ochre and white. Boom. Again. Boom. Boom. The heavens are shining down. Boom. Oh. Damn it. Welcome to Florida. There we go. I'm gonna call this painting done. Hope you like the painting. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will get back to you and promptly and answer all that you may have any questions about. That's it. Thank you guys for watching again. Totally appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, I'll come back with you and we'll do another painting together. All right, have a good night.